Hello, I'm Marjorie Haynes and this is No Face Meals. Today I'm going to um, demonstrate for you um, one of my finds that I've, I've come across. Uh, it's going to, we're going to be making mac and cheese. Everybody likes mac and cheese, but it is heavy on the carbs usually. Uh, a good mac and cheese recipe is anywhere from 400 calories and up per cup. I'm going to show you how to make cauliflower mac and cheese. Same taste, but only 135 calories per cup. That's a huge, I mean, so you get all the nice cheesiness without um, all the carbs, all the calories. So you can, this is guilt free, you can enjoy this. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to prepare my um, cauliflower. We'll start off by telling you I don't like cauliflower. That to cut to just to have it and and eat it as a vegetable, I'm like, no way, I don't like it. So, anytime I I come across a recipe that I'll eat, it's a good recipe. Uh, so what you're doing is you're you're processing your cauliflower, and what we're doing is we're basically cutting. You're going to be cutting the core out. You don't want the core in there. It don't taste good. It's not what we're going for here. Okay. This is going to be super, super easy peasy. Usually takes me about 10 minutes to get it together. Half an hour in the, in the oven and people will think you've spent all day on it and you ain't. You can cut your pieces as big or as small as you'd like. I like to have them um, a medium cut. Uh, so you can get the right ratio of um, cheese and sauce to uh, cauliflower. You know, life is about uh, is about choices. So instead of, of spending your um, calorie currency on um, pasta, this is just a good way of being able to still get that taste and that comfort that you need because uh, mac and cheese is a comfort food, but uh, it's not so hard on the waistline. And as you get older, those things become more important to you. So instead of having mac and cheese and not having to go, not, not being able to have your wine with it, you can have that wine because you save so many calories on your mac and cheese. So you have to do this. So you know, basically you're taking the core out of it. I go through probably four heads of cauliflower a week now because I keep finding interesting things to do with it. Cauliflower itself ha basically doesn't have a taste. Um, it takes on the taste that um, with the st what you put in it. To this, you're going to cut this up. You don't want it super, super small, like a rice. You just want to cut it up into like slices, chunks, so it lays well in your in your cooking dish. First, this goes in the microwave. Now, some recipes will tell you you have to blanch it, and you have to, then you have to drain it, and you have to squeeze the water out of it. Now, if you do it this way, I'm all about making that step easy. This is an easier way of doing it. If you take it and you cut it, and tonight, you know, you can do florets if you'd like. I do, I just do slices. Like I said, I'm trying to, you know, get the right ratio of, of cauliflower to cheese. Because, it, let's face it, mac and cheese is all about the cheese, right? It's about the sauce. You know, it's all about that. It's not so much the vehicle that carries it. It's with any pasta dish. It's all about the sauce and the cheese. And you'll have some that's smaller. That's not a big deal. Put it all in there. And this is this is how you're going to do um, if you want to do things like um, nuggets. You know, which I'll I'll be doing uh, one day. Or uh, like tater tots. I've done 
but this cauliflower. See, you can you can just about do anything with cauliflower. Um, I've even made rice pudding out of it. Um, it's very versatile. Now, of course, before you chop it up, you want to make sure that you rinse it, which I did, because you never know. Okay. Now, we're almost there. And you're putting this, like I said, in a, micro, in a microwavable bowl. Microwave safe, let's be safe. Now you're there. You're not going to season it. You're not going to put no salt, no pepper, no butter, none of that good stuff in there yet. Then you're going to take plastic wrap. You're going to plastic wrap this bad boy up. Basically, you're going to steam it in the microwave. So, got your cling wrap on there. Put that in for 10 minutes when while that is cooking now we're going to make our sauce so at 350 degrees you have to have a whisk you don't want lumps in your in your sauce that is unattractive and it doesn't taste good here you are enjoying a nice mac and cheese and you got this lump of flour in there some people don't use a don't do a roux i do I think it makes a creamier sauce, more consistent. It doesn't separate. Roux are not scary, people. It's not that hard. It's butter and it's flour. You brown it. That's it. In a medium pan, medium over medium heat, you're going to melt that. And then you're going to take a tablespoon. I usually don't measure this out, kids, so... Yeah, I'm of the old school where you just go right ahead and go for it. You're going to melt that butter. And I use butter because this is such a lower calorie. I can't. You don't, uh, you don't want to do dairy. That's fine. You can use oil. Uh, a good oil. Um, you could do a margarine, but that, you know, that may separate. I don't know. But I use butter. I'm vegetarian, I'm not vegan. So you want to get in there and make sure that that's nice. This is going to be the base of your sauce. Alright, you got that going. Turn it down a little bit, hon. And my butter's getting brown. First time I've used this. Now, you're going to take about three good tablespoons. And yes, I just know I just slopped that all over the place. Like I said, I'm, I'm not used to having too many people in my kitchen while I'm trying to fix stuff. What you're looking for here, now this is what is called a roux. It is what uh, you use as a base for uh, um, gumbo and jambalaya and all that. You're basically what you're doing is you're cooking. Just cooking flour. That's all you're doing is cooking the flour. This is going to be your thickening agent for your white sauce. Everything is a white sauce based on a white sauce. You want this a little bit darker color so you get that raw flour taste out. I really did a job there. But you want to cook that until it gets a little bit browner. This sure ain't like... I usually cook in a cast iron skillet. So we're experimenting with the... A little more heat. A little more heat there. Yeah, please, sir. My puppies are doing they are, they are not allowed in the kitchen while I'm cooking, and they are not liking it at all. That's Mr. Kringle, sir.
prank. Oh, be nice. He's got a sister. He's three months old. Just turned three months old. He's got a sister named Blessing. Blessing. She could care less. Just as long as you feed her at the end. She, <laughs> she begs for the food. Alright. I want that just a tad darker. And you're just stirring it. You know, you're just trying to keep it all nice. And you're cooking the flour is what you're doing. Some people don't use a, a roux in their, in their sauce. They just throw some um, flour in, in, their, in their milk as they're cooking it. I, I'm old-fashioned. I, like I like a nice roux. But you need to make sure that you get the right color because you don't want that butter to separate out into your dish because that is unattractive. And we are all about it being attractive. All right, now, to this, that's about it. That's about dark enough. To this, you add your milk. This is what you need the whisk for. Now, you can use cow's milk if you like. You can use any kind of nut butter, uh, nut milk. You can use any of that. Uh, I'm using soy today. Usually I'm stuck with coconut milk because that's what I drink the most of. See how nice and dark that is? That's what you're looking for. Something nice and dark. Not burnt, just dark. All right, now, as you pour this in, you want to whisk and whisk and whisk and whisk and make sure you whisk because you want to incorporate all of that flour with no lumps. That's what you're looking for. Yeah, and it, I put two cups of water. Of water. Of milk. Y'all know what I put in there. Milk. And you want it to whisk. This to get all of those lumps out of there. As you can tell, it's going to start to thicken up because that's what you're looking for. You want it to thicken up. Now, if you mess around and you kind of forget this um, and it gets too thick on you, don't worry about it. Just add a little more milk or whatever uh, milk product you, you put in there, your, your nut milk. Um, like I said, if you don't want to use the butter, you, there's all kinds of alternatives out there that would do just as good. Um, this actually called for heavy cream. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I don't walk five miles every day just to, just to ruin it on one meal, so no. We ain't doing that. So we are cooking this, and we've whisked it, and I don't see any. This is just kind of like your base for... Um, gravy too if you want to make biscuits and gravy but you don't want to use the um, don't want to use any oil any grease this is what this is how you do it now you see it is starting to thicken which is a good thing see how nice and thick it's starting to get you want to thicken it last time I used coconut milk it was sweetened. It was a little bit too sweet. This this time I'm using some soy, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, so you want it thick. So when you add your cheeses to it, now I do something that some people may not do. Cut that down a little bit, dear. It's getting getting thick. I use I put a little cream cheese in mine. Why why not? Cream cheese is a good thing. It will um, make your sauce extremely creamy. Anyone get that open for me? And you only need a tablespoon or so of it. It's getting nice and thick. And that's what 
what you're looking for. Breaking up, make sure I don't have any huge lumps in there. All right, so about about two tablespoons. Right, you don't have to. Now this is like with cheeses. You don't have to stick with just your normal run-the-mill American cheese. Or um, you could put pepper jack in this. You could put um, any cheese that that you would like. You could put in there. Now I've got my oven already preheated to 350, which is what you're wanting. That's what you're needing. Take that lid off that. Yep, it's hot. Extreme caution in, 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 op in opening that, um, because it's gonna be hot, but it's gonna be cooked all the way. Last time I made this, I had it all laid out, all nice and pretty and everything, and then I realized my pan would not fit in the microwave, so I was like, crap, really? Make sure your pan fits the microwave when you're microwaving that. Can you turn that down for me, please? In fact, turn it down to low. Some recipes will tell you to turn this off, and you can if you've got your pan is hot enough. This is an electric skillet, so it kind of acts a little bit different. It's getting nice and thick, getting maybe a little too thick. You don't want your sauce runny because you're, you're going to... Um, this, you're only going to actually put it in the um, oven until it gets nice and bubbly, you know. And that's usually for me, it's at 350, about half an hour. Because you also, I, I like a little, I like my cheese on the top to be just a little bit brown. See, that got a little thick when I add the cheese, the um, cream cheese in it. Now, salt and pepper. We need to talk about salt and pepper for a minute. I don't add it. We're on. We're sodium restricted, so don't add any salt. I might add some pepper once in a blue moon, but it's it's not necessary. To this, you're going to add cheese. Now, I, I'm I'm doing cheddar because that's what we have and that's what we mainly eat is cheddar. You can add whatever cheese you want. How much cheese are you going to add? How much cheese do you like in your, in your mac and cheese? Um, you want to sprinkle it in and you want to whisk it in. You know, you're basically, you're just melting this cheese in this sauce. This all work out in the mix. You can put a, a, a cup to two cups of cheese and I I like cheese so you know I'm more more of the two cup kind of girl like I said you can you can kind of make this as skinny as you want or you know you it can be a little bit on the heartier side depending on what you're going to use it for uh, you can surely add um, a, a, a protein source if you'd like uh, with as much cheese that I've got in here, you're probably going to get a good seven or eight grams of protein. So you may or may not need any more protein in here. Um, plus, you've got um, the milk that is, you know, I put two cups in, and um, yeah, you're going, you're doing um, seven grams of protein for that milk. So you know, you're probably ad averaging a good. 10 or 15, well, about probably 10 or 12. We, we, we're vegetarian, we're not vegan. We, we, tend, we do have a vegan tendency, we don't eat any, any kind of meat, no, nothing with a face, hence no face meals. But we do limit our cheese intake to, to like once a day. So usually, you know, if we have it once a day, there's, there's some times where we don't have cheese at all. But um, I'm gonna call that done. Now, we're going to turn this off, we're going to take it off the heat, and some of it's still not all the way melted. Don't, don't, don't stress this. 
It'll, it'll have to be because you're going to put it in the oven for 30 minutes. Uncover for 30 minutes. We're going to assemble it now. I like to put it in um, this dish. It fills it just right. When you're, anytime you put any kind of casserole, please remember to put it in on top of a cookie sheet in case it bubbles over. But I believe this is probably um, a four quart dish. Now you're gonna take your cooked and fairly dry craw flour, okay? Put it right there in the bottom of the dish. Get this nice, beautiful sauce. And I like sauce, okay? I like a lot of sauce. Because that's what makes mac and cheese, right? I mean, it's the cheese, it's the sauce. That's what, and you can have it this way. This is, this is fairly guilt-free. You, if you want to add salt to it, add salt to it. We don't add salt to anything. Um, I don't go, I don't believe it's it's true that you need to layer your salt in your food. I that's That's crazy. If you need salt, by all means, put salt on your portion. We've been um, low salt now for probably 15, 20 years. Um, we both had high blood pressure problems. Uh, you just don't need that much salt on things to actually taste the food. And that's the whole thing is you want to taste the food, not the salt. And that's all there is to it um, to, to make a roux. I mean, it's really, really simple. You see how nice and thick that became. So you want to make sure, you know, you just want to even that sauce out just a little bit. Make sure all of that gets covered uh, in that nice, glorious sauce. And if you want to use half and half, or you want to add, you want to add the cream, you go for it. I'm not going to spend my calories that way. Because you never know, I might want a piece of pound cake. <laughs> and I'll show you how to make, make that lighter, too. Then you want to add, add some more cheese on top. Enough to cover it, you know, just to make it pretty. Just to, you know, make it cheesier. So I've got probably a good two cups in the dish. And this is probably another half cup. Three fours a cup. Lots of cheese, I know. But when it, it's only, you know, 130 calories, 150 calories, it can have a little more cheese on it. All right, we're gonna put this on our cookie sheet, put it in our oven for 30 minutes, and then I will show you how it looks when it comes out. Pulled our casserole out of the oven. It is, um, we left it in for 350 or until it starts to get this nice bubbly and, um, brown um, a little crust on top of it you could if you like a browner crust you could put it in the broiler for for you know five six minutes um, I kind of like it this way there you have it cauliflower mac and cheese 150 calories as opposed to 400 calories and up but that's all we have for today this would go well with uh, a green leafy vegetable uh, broccoli. I mean, your vegetables are in there, but for a side dish, um, anything nice and green and leafy would be great. Your spinach, your kale, that type of thing. So, that's all we have for today. And I'm Marjorie Haynes for, for No Face Meals, where the food is the star.